Gordon with Film Courage, the radio show. We're outside the studio with Jeannie Vallette Bowerman and Douglas A. Blackman. And together, they are adapting uh, Douglas's uh, 2009 Pulitzer Prize winning book, Slavery by Another Name. They're uh, t collaborating together on a screenplay. And uh, we talked about uh, several things about how the two of you met. We're curious what you're doing in LA. What, uh, we um, first came out for uh, Great American Pitch Fest. Uh, we did that last year and pitched um, the script there for the first time. And this time we came back to speak. Um, yesterday we did a speaking engagement on a case study of how we adapted the book and also tried to span it into regular adaptations of novels and to make it relatable to the audience members to teach them something about how they could to do the same thing. Um, so that was uh, really fun. We did it as a favor to the founders of the Great American Pitch Fest because they're, you know, personal friends of mine. I really love them. I think the the event is wonderful for screenwriters to have access to producers and agents and managers who they couldn't normally access. And they're all pitching there today, and we're here with you. And in reality, the main reason we're here is to be on Film Courage. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> the whole trip was about that. <laughs> and we've got some other meetings over the next few days with uh, some actors and, and producers trying to find the right combination of people to uh, try to make the film happen. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, in addition to what you're working on, I understand that PBS is also hoping to do a documentary slated for release mm -hmm. in 2012. So how did that come about? Did PBS contact you or did you contact PBS? The uh, documentary film uh, grew out of that after the book came out, I was approached by uh, three or four different uh, production companies that were interested in the idea of a documentary film based on the book um, before the Pulitzer. Uh, and, the, and there were two main uh, sort of uh, uh, teams who were interested in getting the rights to the book for that. One of which was um, it, it was sort of uh, the main figure on one team was Sam Pollard, who's a great African American, uh, legendary really African American documentarian filmmaker, a uh, great collaborator of Spike Lee on many of uh, many of his most important work, and including the Oscar nominated uh, Four Little Girls documentary, uh, and also Eyes on the Prize, and a whole dozens of other uh, amazing important films. But so there was a team that involved Sam. Uh, and then there was another production team that was the, the national productions arm of Minnesota Public Television, TPT Productions, which is one of the big producers of, uh, of high quality content for PBS. And so the two of them were both uh, seeking rights to make a documentary. And fortunately, in the end, uh, well, not so fortunately, I, so I was faced with this dilemma between uh, one team that really had the resources and the infrastructure and the uh, the 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 ability to make a film very obvious that being the uh, the TPT productions uh, uh, in Minnesota and then another group that had a kind of artistic vision for the film that uh, was incredibly compelling uh, and so I was really had a dilemma of which of those to go with ultimately I did a deal with TPT productions but we immediately turned around and hired Sam Pollard as the director of the film. And so I ended up with a kind of dream team of, uh, of, of the right people, um, uh, both in terms of the, the infrastructure of how to make the film and then the you know, most creative, most artistic kind of uh, talent that, that we could possibly bring to a project like this. So that's how it happened. And they, you were doing, talking to them around about the same time that I approached you, right? Yeah, and it took a long time. You know, it took yeah. a long, long time to, to figure out what was the best way to go. And I and talked with all those parties for over a long period of time. But then we went into production about a year ago, uh, began shooting, uh, and are re initially raising the money, which we've now done for the most part, though we're still trying to raise a little more. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but the principal photography ended about a month ago. And uh, there'll be a rough cut of the documentary um, finished uh, sometime this month. And uh, one of the, my meetings out here this week is to, to try to nail down the uh, narrator of the film, hopefully very uh, identifiable, prominent African-American actor. Uh, and, uh, and so it should be, uh, should be on PBS sometime next year and maybe have a, a limited theatrical release as well. That's what we hope. So how has the documentary impacted the screenplay that you're working on? Well, I think, you know, when I was saying that I had approached him at the same time that he started talking to the documentary comp companies, 
what was really serendipitous about that was it gave Doug the opportunity to still have some sense of control over what we were doing and what the documentary was doing so that the projects wouldn't, wouldn't overlap, that they would complement each other in terms of educating people and entertaining people, but that they wouldn't be overlapping in similar projects. So that really helped us with our project. Um, so just to, you know, for that whole continuity of it and to be sure we were really covering all the angles and um, so I've, I loved having the documentary as part of it. You know, it sort of released some of the pressure for me to make this educational, you know. We could sort of skip all that exposition and know that that was going to be covered in the documentary version. If people want to learn more, they could go watch the documentary and vice versa, you know. Um, so I've, I think the both projects really complement each other well. Yeah, and that was a very important thing to me from the very beginning that um, that if I did sell rights to do a documentary or a feature film that, that, that it not exclude the other. Because I always had the feeling that there was the, a real opportunity for both kinds of films to be done ultimately. Uh, and the documentary was the logical first project to, to get underway um, because it does cover the, the, the historical landscape. Uh, and, and they are very different films and it did release us to uh, to, to write a screenplay that is really is a film film it, it is based on real events and real characters uh, but it is also uh, definitely a different story uh, a different kind of story um, and and doesn't have the same burden of the history lesson exactly though it illuminates a period of time and a period of history that that is very important and that not many of us understand very well now I understand you're coming back to Los Angeles that's right. I'll be back in L.A. on June 28th for the Limerick Park Book Festival, which uh, I appeared there a year ago, and I'll be back this year uh, with a bunch of other fantastic authors. Uh, and uh, that event this year is actually co-hosted by Bernard and Shirley Kinsey, uh, who are relatives of one of the key characters um, in my book, uh, and an amazing philanthropist and community leaders in Los Angeles. So. Uh, come out and see me at, uh, at the book festival, June 28th.